as activists around the nation call for major police reforms in the wake of recent incidents involving police violence. Senator, Republican Senator Tim Scott says it's important to leverage federal funds to compel change around the nation. It is important for us to use the resources that we provide to law enforcement in a way to get them to, to compel them towards the direction that we think is in the best interest of the nation, of the communities that they, they serve, and frankly, of the officers themselves. And so what we try to do is bridge that gap. But we are in a position that says, in order to get the law enforcement agencies to improve their data collection, to improve their training, to improve the de-escalation of situations and the duty to intervene, we use resources from the federal level to compel or coerce local behavior. Joining me now to discuss is Cornell Brooks, a civil rights attorney and a former president and CEO of the NAACP. Cornell, good to see you. It's good to see you. So does Senator Tim Scott have a good idea? Um, he has a, a good idea from the perspective of offering carrots. But we are too late in the day to offer carrots without sticks. So to, this, to the extent the federal government can incentivize uh, good behavior, tra training, data collection, and the like, mm -hmm. uh, that's fine as far as it goes. But we need to be very clear about this. Given that 1,000 people a year lose their lives at the hands of the police, we need sticks. We need consent decrees. We need uh, mandatory national standards of excessive use of force. We have to strip away the shield, the cloak of protection for abusive police officers known as qualified immunity. Mm -hmm. The point here is we have to be tough and strong and disciplined in our effort to rein in abusive uh, behavior. This is not a matter of offering uh, some fiscal sweeteners, uh, a few extra dollars to bring in uh, a few aberrant police officers. This is a massive national problem, uh, which is uh, represented by the sheer number of people in the streets across America and around the globe. So be clear, the GOP cannot uh, simply uh, offer a few carrots, uh, the use of some serious sticks uh, to bring in, I should say, to, um, to stop this problem. So if I understood uh, Senator Scott properly, and, and you talk about, you know, making some sort of mandatory national standards, in that same interview, he was saying that the federal government really cannot require a municipality, a police department to stop, say, chokeholds, but by de-incentivizing these departments uh, because of the types of training that they may be carrying out by saying, if you don't meet these national standards or requirements, then we can withhold certain federal funds. Um, do you see that that is kind of a, um, I mean, will that placate, you know, those who say, okay, if the federal government can't come in and mandate, then perhaps you can remove some incentive, almost like punishing, it sounds like, a municipality for not doing at least this, you know, meeting certain a certain standard. Of course, uh, but, but to be clear, it's also important to recognize the, the power of the federal government with respect to, uh, say, consent decrees. Mm. Uh, to, when we look at, I should say, when we consider the Department of Justice under the Obama administration using consent decrees, uh, say, for example, in Ferguson, where Michael Brown died, uh, they used a stick, a lever, to rein in a abusive police department. So uh, the exploration of incentives is fine, but we have to be clear that we have to compel uh, with the full weight and authority of the federal government to, uh, to bring about an end to this problem. Mm -hmm. So, hence my point about let's not uh, treat this as a matter of incentivizing good behavior without recognizing the need to rein in bad behavior with the full weight and authority of the federal government. Uh, it has to be used. Uh, Senator Scott, you know, said he, he would hope that this measure could also bring more emphasis on a character-driven law enforcement. How can that be legislated? Well, let's think about this. So uh, if you look at the city of New Orleans, they use a, a program called F, uh, EPIC, which is uh, ethical policing, where they hold police officers accountable 
for the actions of other police officers. So in other words, any time a police officer sees a fellow police officer engaging in behavior that could lead to termination or suspension, that officer has an ethical responsibility, a moral obligation, if you will, to act, to intercede. So in the case of Derek Chauvin, who choked uh, out George Floyd with his knee, the police officers standing by as witless bystanders uh, would have an obligation to intervene. So while it is true, uh, the federal government cannot create uh, a conscience, the federal government can incentivize mm -hmm. conscience behavior, moral behavior, ethical behavior, by incentivizing police departments, for example, to use the ethical program, uh, but also using the Justice Department to hold police, police departments accountable for unethical behavior, unconstitutional brutal behavior. Let's be clear about this. We cannot take a weak need, spineless, gutless approach to this uh, longstanding, uh, deep-seated uh, problem rooted in systemic racism. We have the tools, we have the means, we have the scholarship, the research, the data, but we also have the will. And Cornell, thank you so much for being with us uh, today on this Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to you. And I do wonder what kind of new conversations are you having with your kids, particularly in the climate we are in? Mm, well, I can tell you this. Uh, last night, um, my youngest son and I were talking to like one, two o'clock in the morning. Mm. and talking about this problem and I said to him I said you know when you go out with your friends I never worry about you having or getting a a flat tire I worry about the police showing up when you get a flat tire that is to say those who are charged with protecting and serving I'm worried about whether or not uh, we need protection for you from them the fact is all the parents listening to this program watching this program I experience anxiety when their children uh, stay out later than they should but the problem for African-American parents and, and the parents of, of communities of color is uh, that we have to worry 100 times more. But this is the moment, be clear, this is the moment where we can do something to alleviate those worries and literally uh, speak to the possibilities of, of this country and this nation. So uh, that would honor uh, the spirit of Father's Day uh, by giving fathers less to worry about. Mm -hmm. Cornell Brooks, always appreciate you. Thank you so much for that. Thank you.